Hey guys, it's Rogway back here again for another exciting tutorial. And today we're looking at digital makeup. We're going to have a little bit of fun here, uh, messing with somebody's um, makeup. I am not in any way an expert at what professional or proper makeup should look like, but I will do my best here to help you out to, um, you know, try some of these techniques maybe on your own photos. So we're going to work with this photo here called Model Portrait. Very lovely lady already, but we're going to, you know, see if we can adjust the photo a little bit more, tweak it. So we're going to pull this file into Photoshop and begin. Whoa, what's that file doing there? Okay, so um, I take no responsibility for this photo. This is one that I found and I thought it was a good candidate for this and uh, hopefully this helps you guys out. Okay, so let's say, you know, you take a photo of your friend or you take a photo of yourself, you do a selfie or whatever and you want to see what your hair might look like as a different color or you might want to see what highlights would look like or different color contacts or makeup that you've never tried a color before. This is the best way to test it out without actually testing it out on yourself. So let's start with the first one. We're going to do the hair. Okay, so we're going to make a new layer. We're going to call it highlights. Okay, so name your layer. Double click the name, call it highlights. And we're going to choose a brush with a nice color to it. And I'm going to go with hot pink because that's clearly the color I would go with. Um, hot pink. I'm going to change the size here to, uh, well, let's see here. Whoops. Um, no, it doesn't really matter. But the most important is the hardness is at zero. Uh, we want to decrease our brush size. You can see my brush size up here. We're going to create a highlight along the front hair here. So with my hot pink, I'm going to paint on a highlight just like that. And as I get to these shorter pieces down here, I'm going to decrease my brush size just so it doesn't look like it's all the same width, which looks really fake. And then, you know, I can get creative here. I can imagine how maybe the highlight would come back up into here and uh, maybe swirl around this little ringlet of hair up here. Is that the correct term? Ringlet? Okay, so like that. That's pretty horrible. And obviously when you look at that, you're like, wow, that is not natural at all. But it's not going to look natural just yet. So we have that up there. Um, again, we could do more. You know, maybe I want another color. Maybe I want a blue next to it. So I'm going to maybe do a couple blue highlights going through, something like that. Okay. And we're just going to play around here with a few different highlights. Now, the most important thing here is that the highlight follows the direction of some hair that's on the person's ha uh, head. All right, if you don't follow a hair, it's going to look really weird. So, okay, we got that on there. It looks really bad. It looks horribly fake. But now what we're going to do is we're going to change the blending mode. We're going to change it to, let's try multiply. Ooh, uh, it's better. Let's try soft light. Okay, not bad, not bad. Overlay. Ooh, too intense. Soft light's not bad. But it still looks really fake. It still looks painted on. And, you know, that doesn't look that, gr that good yet. It looks a lot more real. It doesn't look perfect yet. We're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just blur up those lines a bit to help blend them in with the surrounding hair. So all I'm doing here is I am increasing the slider until I find a point where I feel it looks a lot more natural. And to me, that looks better. Okay, you can see how harsh it is there and now we've kind of blurred it out. Now, if we still are kind of thinking, eh, it looks fake, we could go with our opacity and pull that back to bring back some of the natural hair underneath until we find a point where we say, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so as you can tell with that layer off and on, you know, we can see what a highlight would look like in the hair, somewhat naturally. Now, if I wanted to get really picky, I would go with my eraser, 
And I might erase around the edges so that I don't have color hanging off the edge, which looks really fake. I might do the same on her face where maybe some of the pink is going on to her face. But for the sake of the tutorial, that's pretty good. You can see how that looks. The same exact method can be applied for makeup on the face. So we're going to add another layer. We're going to call this eyeshadow. I think this is what it's called. Again, I'm no cosmetics um, expert, but I think it's called eyeshadow. Not eyeshadows, but I, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take a paintbrush and we're going to find a nice color. I'm going to go with the hot pink again to match the hair. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to brush it on where I think eyeshadow should go. Now, please go easy on me. I don't do eyeshadow, all right? Um, it's not my thing. But as we get out to the end here, I think it flares out kind of like this. And again, the cool thing is, even if it's not right, it's gonna look pretty legit in a second. Exact same technique, change the blending mode. Maybe this time I'll go multiply. Okay, same deal. Whoa, it looks like she went crazy with the eyeshadow. Let's go soft light, try different things. Overlay, Ew. oh, gets worse. Let's go soft light, bring down the opacity. That's not so intense. And we could blur it if we want to, if we really want. Exact same steps as the highlights. You see that it works really nicely for eyeshadow as well. Okay, so that's all good. We now have um, some eyeshadow on there. You can see how quick and easy this is to do, and it looks pretty believable. Now, what I want you guys to do is go back to the background layer, click the background layer, and let's zoom in on the eyes. Click the quick mask button, which is at the bottom of the toolbar right here, and using a black brush, paint over the eyes, okay, paint over the part of the eye that has color, which, you know, is the iris and the pupil, we'll, we'll paint over the whole thing. Okay, same with the other side. It's gonna go red, that means you're doing it right. And paint over the whole entire iris, just like that. When you're happy with that, press Command Zero, and she looks like the spawn of Satan, but that's okay. We're gonna click that Quick Mask button again, and you'll notice that Quick Mask selects everything else. We're gonna go Select Inverse. We want the selection to be just on the eyes. What I like to do if I'm making any sort of adjustment to somebody that might really, really change them, is I like to put that adjustment on a new layer. And the quickest way is if you've got a selection, you just press Command J, and now you'll notice that we actually, it actually creates a layer just for that selection. It makes an eyes layer. So I'm gonna name that eyes. Now the quickest, easiest way to change the eye color is to go to image adjustments. We could do hue and saturation. And you can see that if I move the hue slider, we can change your eye color to whatever we want. I like that method. Could also do color balance. Okay, and if the eyes are way too intense, like let's say I want them to be green, um, I could make them more intense with saturation, but I could probably want to pull them down. Pull the saturation slider down so that it's less intense. And you can see that I can, I can go to whatever color I want. Okay, um, I can make the colors whatever I want. And so this is like I said, if, if you're thinking of what color um, contacts to get, you know, take a good shot of yourself and, and do this so that you know what it's gonna look like. Next, go to background. We're gonna do the lips, exact same method. We're gonna zoom in and click that quick mask button. We're gonna use our black paintbrush and we're going to highlight the lips just like so. It's like we're already putting lipstick on. And we want to make sure we get all of the red on the lips as much as we can. Just a reminder to have your brush set really soft. I think I said that earlier. Make sure it's still set soft, otherwise you get really kind of ugly edges. And there we go. Now we got the lips highlighted. Wow, that looks horrible. <laughs> um, now, out of quick mask mode again. Select inverse so that we have the lips selected. Now some people their Photoshop automatically selects. I don't know where that setting is and why it does that, but press Command J. 
We got the lips on their own layer. We're going to call them lips. Okay, and now we're going to go do the exact same thing. Adjustments, hue and saturation. We are tweaking the color of the lips. Look at that. It almost matches the eyeshadow and everything. And you really can set whatever color you want here. If you don't like the way it looks, for example, let's say I go with, uh, you know, I go for a matching color here. But I say, ah, oh, you know, it's horrible here. It, it went off of her lips. You see that? Well, because I made a new layer for just that enhancement, I can just go in there and erase that part out. Okay, and it's going to show me what was under the original, you know, on the original layer anyways. No problem. Okay, so that was a quick, pretty quick tutorial. Um, and again, it depends on how fancy you want to get. You know, if you want to do eyeliner, for example, if you want to go around the eye, I'm not going to do it on this particular tutorial, but it would be the exact same method. I'd make a new layer, take a small brush, you know, I can even show it, I guess I can show it really quick. Um, make a new layer. Same idea, we're going to just paint some eyeliner on. Now, guys, again, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Okay, but I know that this is maybe what some ladies do with their eyes. And I know you're not supposed to get it on the inner eyelid thing because that hurts, because my wife says that. <laughs> and we're just gonna draw that on, just like so. Woo, looks horrible. But we're gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Blur it out, now you can see even there, it just looks like a kind of a sultry look. And we can adjust it, we can tweak it. If we want it to be more gothic-like, we go back. If we want it to be softer, we go up. And even after we make that initial adjustment, we can always go back and change the opacity so it's not so intense. All right, so that was eye liner. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's look at the before. There she is. We did the highlights. We did the eyeshadow. We did the eye color. We did the lips. And we did the eyeliner. And that was very quick and very easy. And like I said, the end result is pretty believable. So hopefully you can use that for your own portraits or for portraits of people you take. Have some fun with it. See what you can do. Hope that helps. Talk to you later.